The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good afternoon, everyone, uh, and welcome to a Future of Functional Skills webinar for the Functional Skills Reform. Uh, my name's Dean Blewett. Uh, I'm going to be your host today, uh, and I'm the Curriculum Officer for Functional Skills at NCFE. Uh, today's webinar, we're going to cover the Maths Level 1 and Level 2 qualifications. Uh, next week, I also need to highlight that we also have webinars available for Entry Level English and Entry Level Maths as well. Uh, yesterday, we did run a webinar for English Level 1 and Level 2, uh, and the resources, uh, sort of map and documents, as well as the preparation checklist and a recording of this webinar uh, are now available on our website and YouTube page. Uh, we've tried to break the webinars down as much as possible into their subject content areas, um, just so we can be a little bit more descriptive uh, and evaluate the content in a little bit more depth. This webinar today is focused on the preparation uh, you can be doing as a center for the functional skills reform uh, and will be split into two halves. We'll be looking at some high level changes to begin with uh, and after that we'll be moving on to some specific content changes using our new map and documents during the second half of the webinar. There's going to be an email sent round after this webinar, uh, usually by close of play today or early tomorrow, um, which will share, which you can use to share with colleagues uh, or use for CPD purposes. The email will contain a recording, the map and documents, and the preparation checklist. So please, obviously, keep your eyes open for that. We do have the question function enabled uh, for this webinar. Um, on the right hand side of the screen so please feel free to ask any questions at any point during the webinar uh, we do have some scheduled pause points where we can address those questions and we can obviously follow them up if there are any in-depth questions or specialist questions where we do feel a little bit more follow-up is required uh, we will highlight those in the email afterwards um, there's also a number of polls during the webinar. Uh, this is as much for your experience as it is for ours as well. Uh, the reform is obviously new for everyone and at NCFE uh, we like to understand exactly where or which support our customers would like. So I would ask if you could engage with those uh, just to make it a better experience for everyone involved. So just to cover what we'll start, uh, we'll just go through the agenda items. So we're going to start with the story so far. This is just a little bit of background information. Uh, after that, we'll look at the timeline of events and where we are on that. Uh, point three, we'll look at what you need to know. So that's a high level overview of the changes for maps. Point four, we'll be looking at the mapping documents and the specific changes for the maths qualifications at level one and level two. Point five, we'll be looking at some things that you can be doing at the moment to prepare for the functional skills reform, uh, which takes place in September 2019. And finally, we'll look at what NCFE has upcoming uh, and what we're doing at the moment to provide support for, for all of our customers. And um, before we start then, we'd just like to gauge everyone's understanding of the reform so far. So during these questions, I'd ask you to be as honest as possible. Uh, we're not looking to record these responses to follow up or anything like that. Uh, it's designed to offer information. So if you don't know anything, uh, please be honest. And that's a webinar's focus. So the very, very first poll, and I'll bring this up now, is what do you know about the functional skills reform? So is it everything? Um, quite a bit. You know it's taking place. Is it not a lot or do you not know anything at all with regards to the functional skills reform? So I'd ask you to put in your questions just on the poll now uh, and we'll take those responses. We did similar sort of thing for English yesterday. And as I say, that's really helping to inform exactly what we're doing with our webinars, exactly how much support obviously we're putting into place uh, as it develops. So I'll just leave that open for around about 30 seconds. So if you could just answer on the poll for me, please. Brilliant, so I'm getting most people's. Okay, so I've had 83% of people. Uh, I'll close that off now. So we've got a little bit of a, a mixed bag for this one. So we've got 3% uh, know everything that there is to do with the functional skills reform. We've got 38% that know quite a bit. 41% who are aware that it's happening. 3% uh, that don't know too much. And 14% of us uh, don't know anything about the functional skills reform. So hopefully uh, by the end of this webinar, we will be able to improve those statistics. Uh, you'll have a more in-depth knowledge of, of the reform. And if it is something where actually you do know everything so far, I still think it's useful, obviously, cement those views uh, and 
know that exactly what you know is the correct information. So let's make a start by looking through the story so far. All right, the story so far. And so in 2013-2014, Ofqual instructed uh, all awarding organizations to submit their assessment papers, uh, mark schemes, learning resources, and also processes on how they run functional skills. Um, on the back of that sort of submission, uh, Ofqual then conducted a thematic review of the qualifications, uh, and each awarding organization actually received an individual report um, before a national report was shown to everyone. Um, most people will be aware of the thematic review. Uh, you may not know of the nature of the reports or, or, or really have seen any national reports. Uh, you certainly wouldn't have seen any individual reports, but you will have been aware that there were some changes to assessments. So in summary, the main sort of findings from the functional skills thematic review was that functional skills qualifications as they are currently uh, aren't broken, uh, but there are some improvements that could be made to strengthen these qualifications. So on the back of that uh, thematic review, Ofqual instructed a series of consultations um, and also instructed the functional skills reform to take place. Uh, on this matter, Ofqual and the Department for Education worked with a series of organisations, uh, including the Education Training Foundation, the ATF, and also PyTech Consultancy. Now, the idea of working with these external agencies was to review the subject content uh, that's on offer for each of the English and Maths qualifications. Uh, they looked at exactly what employers wanted, uh, what learners wanted to know, what centres wanted to be seen, and also what schools wanted from the functional skills qualification. After that, it went through a process of a series of reviews and also consultations until earlier this year in February, uh, the subject content was released for these reform qualifications. In addition to that, in July, the assessment guidelines were released, uh, and this meant that awarding organisations were now able to start begin uh, developing those new qualifications. Um, at the moment, all the working organisations are currently in the process of submission to Ofqual. Uh, what that means is we've submitted our sample papers, we've submitted our processes, uh, everything like that. Ofqual will review all of those processes, all those sample papers. Uh, part of the thematic review was to ensure that there was comparable outcomes for all awarding organisations. So they'll be reviewing everyone's and um, they'll be looking and what Ofqual will do is they'll allow us to offer the new qualification if we hit, hit that approval criteria. Um, the first teaching of this new functional skills qualification will be made available from September 2019 and actually on the 31st of August 2019 you will find that this current version of functional skills the last registrations will take place during that time so after the 31st of August 2019 on this current version of functional skills there won't be any more registrations uh, everyone will have to be registered on the new reform functional skills. Um, part of the qualification development then was actually the purpose of the qualification did change slightly. So this statement below was provided by the Department for Education uh, in Ofqual. I'm not going to read through every exact detail of it, but I am going to summarise some of the key purposes. Um, part of the functional skills qualification reform was to make it more relevant to the workplace, hence that uh, engagement with employers, engagement with learners. Um, there was also a need to improve on underpinning knowledge. So that, that plays a big part in these maths qualifications and we'll go through that a little bit later, uh, as well as the ability to apply this in different contexts. So we're looking at really functional themes there. And then finally, its ultimate purpose really is those transferable skills in the progression into employment or further technical education. Um, that's very, very similar to what the previous qualification purpose was. Uh, it's more descriptive, uh, and that's a running theme with all of the changes for these functional skills qualifications. But really, it stresses the importance of those transferable skills now. Uh, and that's very, very evident within this purpose statement. OK, we're going to have a little look at a brief timeline um, and just talk you through, obviously, that to start with. So in terms of where we are in the timeline at the moment, uh, we're obviously in December. So as referenced before, everyone is submitting for functional skills uh, reform and to see if they can approve that. Um, off quality, a period of actually reviewing that. Um, and we're hoping for results in around about February, March time. Um, that's also the time really where approved uh, award and organisations will be able to share things like sample papers, sample assessment materials, uh, and they'll be able to demonstrate all of that. 
just to clarify, obviously about sample questions, we do sometimes get queries with regards to those. Um, NCFE are taking the policy of that. We won't be sharing any sample questions or sample materials until we are approved for the qualification. Uh, and the reason why that is, is we wouldn't want to obviously mislead uh, or provide incorrect information with regards to that. Um, we haven't been approved yet. Uh, and obviously until we are approved, all those assessment materials and sample questions would be actually subject to change if we didn't hit approval. So once we are approved, we will then be releasing documents like that. Uh, the focus of today's webinar is really to focus on what we can be doing now as tutors, as assessors, as centres. Okay. Just going to start off with another poll now uh, before we get into the more descriptive nature of these maths level one and level two qualifications. And hopefully this one will help us. So how do you feel at the moment about the functional skills reform? Just going to open this poll. We'll do a poll after this as well to see how you feel after we've done the mapping documents. Um, I'll launch that now. So do you feel very, very positive with regards to these functional skills reforms? Do you feel positive, undecided, uh, worried or very worried? Leave that open there. Brilliant. So I've had 80% of people uh, on the vote so far. I'll just leave that open for another few seconds. Okay, and I'm going to close that poll and I'll share those results. So at the moment, these are actually quite good results. We've got 8% that are very positive about the changes, 40% that are positive, 48% undecided, and 5% worried. Uh, I hope by obviously reviewing the subject content, looking at the map and documents, that we can move a lot of people from the undecided and worried sections onto those positive sections. Uh, it is a positive change for functional skills. Uh, you'll see as we go through the subject content exactly why it's such a positive change uh, for us. It is a big change. Uh, it does require a lot of work, but it will make the qualification um, more thorough, more rigorous uh, for future assessments and obviously for future learning as well. So let's have a look at the next slide then. So a lot of the information that I'm going to be sharing today comes from the subject content and also the functional skills conditions and requirements. Uh, Ofqual have released a series of documents on these. Uh, I've hyperlinked them in this presentation that we'll share with you afterwards so you can get to the subject content for English simply by going on those two links. The conditions and requirements uh, contains the subject content but also contains a number of other decisions uh, as well. So you should be able to access those documents uh, by using the hyperlinks uh, that you can see on screen now. Okay. Right, so some of the key content changes for the maths assessments. So previously, uh, maths assessments were split into three areas, which were uh, representing, analysing, and also interpreting. Uh, that shifted slightly or, or somewhat. So now maths will be split into the subject content areas of using numbers in the number system, using common measures, shape, and space, and also handling information and data. Now, the weightings between those three different areas uh, are sort of within our sample guidelines uh, we do expect to see a lot of number within our assessments as well as a lot of shape space and measure and also some handling information and data but we will have common sort of weighting strategies between those which once we're approved we'll be able to share exactly what our weightings would be for those three areas uh, the key changes for the maths assessments and there's, there's really one huge change which is the addition of a non calculator section now that's both for entry level assessments as well as level one and level two assessments the non-calculator section will form 25% of the overall assessment. Um, that means 25% of the marks will, will be allocated to this. So within a 100 mark paper, you're looking at 25 marks there. Um, the other remaining 75% will be made up of a section where uh, learners are allowed a calculator. It continues to be a single component. So by that, there will be one pass mark for both the non-calculator and calculator sections. So the scores that a learner achieves on both those sections uh, will be added together and the pass mark will be based around that total score. So there wouldn't be any need really for learners to achieve a set pass mark, sorry, a set score on both sections uh, individually. And it's actually in fact just one pass mark for both sections. 
Okay. There's an increased focus on problem solving skills. So at level one, that's described as straightforward. And at level two, that's described as complex. So now 75% of the paper is made up of these problem solving skills. Uh, and if you were aware of the changes recently in A-level uh, mathematics, as well as GCSE mathematics, uh, you'll note that actually this is something that's happened in the reform of those qualifications as well. And that these problem solving skills are becoming more apparent within these mathematics qualifications qualifications. At level one, straightforward uh, has some rough guidelines to go with it and within the map and document that they, they're fully described. Uh, straightforward though for the purpose of it, uh, some problem solving questions will at level one contain two subject content areas. That means that some of the questions could draw from uh, topics that are handling information and data as well as using numbers in the number system. Uh, some of them at level one will also be two-step problems or require the learner to work through two processes. Um, at level two that would change and obviously become more complex as described by the title um, where actually it can draw from three subject content areas so that could be all three of handling information and data, shape, space and measure and number. Um, as well as that, uh, learners are expected to work through multi-step problems uh, or multi-step steps and also processes. The running theme really, and this was apparent yesterday within the English uh, mapper documents, is that actually more descriptive guidelines uh, have been given on what content should be assessed. And you'll notice as we go through the mapper documents uh, for maths, these are really, really actually quite descriptive now. Uh, there's an increased focus also on underpinning skills. I think I referenced that before as we were looking at the qualification purpose. Um, within that then, uh, I referenced before, 75% of the paper is going to be made up of problem solving. 25% will be made up of underpinning skills. Now, our definition and how we interpret underpinning skills at NCFE is we think underpinning skills is actually where we directly approach the criteria of the question. So that there's no cloud there for the learners. The learners aren't sort of looking and thinking, hmm, which steps do I need to do? Instead, it's a very, very straightforward problem where the process should be extremely clear for learners. Uh, one of our subject matter experts used a fantastic analogy for thinking about problem solving and independent skills. Uh, he, he compared it to teaching car mechanics. Uh, you may be able to teach someone how to use a spanner. You may be able to teach them how to use a wrench. Those would be your underpinning skills. Problem solving would be very much, can you fix this engine? Uh, can you fix this part of a car? So almost where the learners need to know when it's appropriate to use those underpinning skills and also what order to use the underpinning skills in. Okay, so we're going to move on to and have a little look at the mapping documents. Um, I am going to take this opportunity just to look through a few questions. So if you do have any questions regarding high level overview changes, then please ask them now. Uh, we are going to delve more into the details of the subject content in a few moments. So, so I'll just have a look at some of the questions so far. So we have one question that references the webinar yesterday and I haven't received an email yet. Uh, I can follow that up after this webinar. Uh, all delegates should receive an email whether you attend live or not. So as long as you've registered for the event, you should get one. Uh, I will follow that up though and I'll, when I send the follow-up to this email, I'll ensure that your email address is included in that. Um, there's another one. Um, given that pass marks are in the low 70%, does this mean that a learner may pass without doing an on-calculator section? Um, I can't obviously sort of discuss pass marks at the moment because they're all provisional. Technically though, um, if a pass mark was say set at 65%, you're absolutely correct. If you attained 100% on the calculator section, which would be 75% of the assessment, then you wouldn't need to obviously pass the non-calculator section. However, that would be extremely difficult to achieve that 100% on that uh, calculator section. But in theory, you are correct, although it wouldn't be an advisable approach uh, for learners. Okay, is there any other questions coming through? All right, let's move on to the mapping documents. And so NCFE, and if you attended the webinar yesterday, uh, you'll be aware of what these look like for English. Uh, we're going to go through them for maths today. So we've produced a series of mapping documents uh, which map the current functional skills onto the reform functional skills. Now, the idea of these mapping documents is we're really trying to highlight where new content areas are. Uh, so that's new content for the qualification. Um, there's 
quite a few of those for maths. Uh, there's content changing levels as well. I can see for level one and level two maths, uh, there's not so much content changing levels. That's more apparent at the entry levels. Uh, and also what we've done on the map and documents is we've also made comments on each of the subject content areas. That might be a comment saying that there's not even been any changes, or it may be a comment that says, actually, this was implicitly indicated in the previous functional skills, which has never actually said it uh, or wrote it down on a bare paper, but we would actually do that regardless. The content, as I said before, is a lot more descriptive than it was previously. Uh, it's explained that it was three mandatory components. So as you look in the map and documents, it'll be in those three areas. Now, these map and documents are live on our website at the moment. I am going to go through each of them. But just in case you were wishing to find them, uh, you can access them via our Qual Hub page. If you go to Delivery and Learner Support, the Functional Skills homepage, and then you go to the News and Updates section, uh, we regularly keep this section updated with a number of reform documents. So you can find the map and documents within here. So for maths level one, that's a map and document. You can see there the first section is all about number. The second section is about shape. And the third section is about data. And the fourth section is about this problem solving and decision making and exactly what's expected of learners when it comes to that problem solving uh, questions. Okay. We're going to look through them in depth. Uh, also on the news and update section, I'd like to highlight the preparation checklist. We'll be looking at that later um, and I will go into that in more detail. And we've also got a number of guides and calendars as well on there. So it's worth checking out that section uh, for any big updates. All right, let's start to review these map and documents. And so map and document, this is level one. We'll go through what the changes are. Um, I'll talk you through exactly what they mean. Um, and then we'll move on to level two after that. So you can see there that on this section, we've got a few stars appearing. Now that's with reference to new subject content. So that's stuff that maybe previously wasn't on our assessments. Uh, you can see what I mean about making the comments on different sections though. So if we have a look at the, the reformed um, subject content. So this is a new content that will be effective from September, 2019. That's with the first column. The second column is a current uh, off-qual criteria. So this is a, what we currently assess. And the third column is obviously the comment. We can see there in the first column that actually two subject content statements, read, write, order, and compare large numbers up to 1 million, and also recognize and use positive and negative numbers is now referenced um, in just one subject content statement in the current functional skills. So understand use whole numbers and understand negative numbers in practical context. We can see now that actually it is more descriptive. It's now saying at level one, we'd expect them to work with numbers up to 1 million. Uh, and we can see we've made a comment on that um, specific reference to 1 million and specific reference to ordering as well and comparing those large numbers. So you can see there's a lot more descriptiveness there. Uh, it may only be very, very slight changes that's been made. And you may think actually, I have been doing that already. I would expect a large number to be up to a million. But what's happened here is it's really, really wrote down. Uh, it's set in stone now and it's very, very clear. Um, so as an assessor, as a tutor, uh, you can certainly appreciate the nature of that. Uh, we'll go through and we'll just have a little look at some of the new subject content statements. So new to assessment then at level one is calculating the squares of one digit and two digit numbers. Um, so that's brand new to this assessment. So we now are expecting learners to be able to work out three squared, 12 squared, uh, maybe on the not, uh, on the calculator section, 17 squared. Uh, learners will need to know what that means. Uh, so they'll need to know obviously three squared, three times three. 12 times 12 and they'll also need to know obviously how to do that as well so it's not just to say that could be on the calculator section that could also be on the non-calculator section um, there's a specific reference to bid mass or bod mass so previously this one does have a star next to it however we would assess bid mass bod, bod mass but it's been very very uh, made very very specific now that we need to follow the order of operators uh, which is that specific reference to bid mass or bod mass uh, if you're not aware of that that's obviously brackets indices division multiplication addition and subtraction and it's the order of operations so that's something that will be uh, on our assessments again that could be an either section of the paper um, I would say if you are new to teaching that topic, uh, just be careful with learners typing it all into their calculator at once. Um, calculators obviously can't process bid mass, uh, so it would require learners to input it in the correct order there. 
We've also got some clear, clearer references for fractions. So we can see the FTB, uh, FDP section has been split into three subject content statements now. So compare and comment fractions, mixed numbers. So that's a very specific reference there to mixed numbers. Finding fractions of whole numbers. So a very clear reference. And again, something that's quite new for level one or new to NCFE's assessments is a specific reference to ordering and comparing decimals up to three decimal places. Currently at level one, we would expect two decimal places. So that's new for our assessments. We will be going up to three decimal places now. Um, I'll obviously, I've just highlighted the main ones there. These documents will be available for you to obviously have a little look through with your staff afterwards. I would certainly say it's something where you need to be looking at with staff and looking for those CPD opportunities uh, where staff are unaware. Uh, they're not really sure what, you know, Square is the best way to teach BOD mass. Looking at those uh, changes is really, really important. We'll have a look at shape, space and measure now. So there are a few new changes to level one uh, maths at this level. So a lot of, a lot more clearer references, especially when it comes to money. Uh, previously, it was a statement that mentioned money, uh, but now it, it, we go into the details of actually, we're expecting uh, learners to be able to know what simple interest is in multiples of 5% there as well as discounts. So that's two very, very specific references. Um, in addition to that, uh, we do have some new to assessment areas. So new to assessment, uh, volume was included in the core curriculum, but was never specifically mentioned in the current version of functional skills. So that is brand new to this assessment is volume of cubes and cuboids. Um, line symmetry and angles is brand new as well. So line symmetry, obviously, we'll be aware of that from um, it's a very key, sort of key stage free topic, but that will be in the assessments now. It's only for 2D shapes. Uh, line symmetry only incorporates obviously drawing lines on the shapes. Uh, it won't incorporate things like rotational symmetry. So it's purely just line. Uh, angles as well. So knowledge of the relative size of angles. So that means that learners would need to be able to look at an angle and roughly estimate exactly what the size of it is. So we'll need to know the difference between angles such as uh, obtuse and acute angles, as well as a uh, common angles of 90, uh, 180 and 360 degrees there as well. So that's brand new. Um, plans elevations, plans uh, elevations are brand new as well for 3D shapes. So that really factors in with the net. So we're now going to need to look at shapes and be able to know exactly what a 3D shape would look like from a plan view, a side view and a front view as well. Uh, we'll also need to know exactly how to draw the net of a 3D shape. and that that that's going to be quite a quite a big change there. Um, obviously, those are on online assessments also. Um, the last change really is new to assessing the position, direction, using angles as well, and measuring angles and degrees. So there's another change within that shape, space, and measure uh, section. So quite a few key changes there. Uh, a lot of brand new content. Felt like number in the last section was almost extending upon some ideas. Uh, also some implicit ideas, but in this section there are four definite new changes that we wouldn't have previously assessed. Let's have a look at handling information and data. So again, some quite big changes to this section. Uh, the biggest one is knowing how to use a probability scale. So previously we'd expect learners to be able to work out theoretical probabilities uh, and understand obviously, uh, you know, a quarter is less uh, chance of happening than say uh, four fifths. Now learners will need to use a probability scale to express this. So a probability scale works on, on a scale of zero, obviously, to one, uh, where on one end you have impossible events, on the other end you have certain events. Uh, learners could be asked to put uh, events on a probability scale. They could be asked to put fractions on a probability scale as well. There's a reference here as well within 24, uh, group discrete data and represent group data graphically as well. So previously, um, there wasn't a reference really for that group data. There is now a, a specific reference saying that that will be examined, that will be assessed um, within that section. Okay, so that's a level one changes. Uh, I'll open it up for a few questions again. I can see a few have came in so far. So I'm just gonna open that up uh, before we move on to the level two changes. Yeah, so that's a great comment uh, by Nikki on the change for the 
uh, sorry, the changes on 3D shapes, um, especially as the world economy moves more and more into the technological field. So that's exactly right. Um, and there's a lot more of those changes. Uh, if there's no other questions, we'll go on to level two changes. Uh, and we can have a look at those. Um, the final thing obviously reference on this map and document is this problem solving area as well. So I did go through exactly what would be expected of a level one learner. Um, and also does the description of a straightforward problem. Um, we can see there that a straightforward problem is one that requires students to work through one step or process or work through more than one connected step or process. So that's just reiterating exactly what that problem solving is. Uh, there's also some learner names and outcomes at level one uh, and a, a summary of what a level one learner should be able to do um, by the end of their assessment and also what we've assessed them on there. So there's a few key things within that section. Okay, let's move on to the level two map and document. So some of the key changes here, then, uh, there are some different ones. Uh, I think it's important to note at this point, uh, knowledge should be subsumed. So by that, what I mean is a level two learner should be um, efficient and knowledgeable of all areas of the level one qualification. So they could actually be assessed on something that requires some level one information. So it might be, reference before multiples of 5%. It could be where at level two, you could be asked to do interest of 15%. So where learners need to use that knowledge from level one in order to do a level two objective. So that is quite important, the reference at this stage. You may look at these documents and think actually at level two, uh, this isn't included. It's mentioned at level one, but it's missed out at level two. That doesn't mean it won't be assessed at level two. It, it can actually still be assessed during that. Um, and that's the same across the board. So level one, you would expect them to be able to do anything an entry level three, entry level two or entry level one learner could do as well. So let's have a look at the key changes for level two. So the first specific uh, reference or the new is a reference to calculations with values of up to a million. So that's the same as new level one, but there's a specific reference here to checks using estimation and approximation there. So learners will need to check their answers using those two methods and that will be assessed during that level two assessment. Other changes, uh, we can see now that actually there's changes for percentage change. This was something that was subsumed, uh, sorry, not subsumed, something that was implicit in the previous uh, qualification, but has now been expressed directly within the subject content. So learners will need to be able to calculate percentage change and also the original values after a percentage change. So that's reverse percentages. Uh, again, I think that wasn't really referenced clearly within the criteria, but now it's very, very clear. Also new is proper and improper fractions as well as mixed numbers. So learners will need to be aware of all of these different types of fractions. So for proper fa fractions, we're looking for things like um, 12 over 13 would be an example of a proper fraction. An improper fraction or top heavy fraction as it's also known would be something like 15 over 13. A mixed number might be if we do 15 over 13 would be one and two 15. So a large number one and two 15s wrote near that. So that is new at this level. Another specific reference is to inverse proportion. So previously direct proportion was referenced. So direct proportion obviously as one quantity goes up, the other one will go up as well. So that might be something like ice cream sales and the temperature. Uh, you'd expect that as the temperature increases, the number of ice cream sales would increase. Um, inverse proportion is as one value goes down, the other one actually increases. So if I use a similar example, uh, it could be temperature and I don't know, soup sales. Uh, so as temperature decreases, decreases, you may expect the, an increase in the amount of soup that you're selling. Um, that would be an example of inverse proportion. We'd be expecting learners to know exactly what that is in a variety of different contexts. Uh, remember, these are functional skills assessments, so they will be comparable to real life situations and scenarios. Um, Point 12 is a big change as well. So this actually combines two subject statements from level one together, but the specific reference is for indices. So indices are slightly different to the squares. So we'd now be expecting actually learners to be able to work out things like three cubes uh, rather than just three squared. Um, and that would expen extend obviously for other indices such as five to the power of four. Uh, learners could be expected to calculate that as well and know exactly what that means. Okay. Key changes for number there. So we'll move on to shape, space and measure now. 
lots of key changes here. So the, if we go through these, so the first thing is there's a lot more specific reference to things such as compound interest, percentage increases and decreases, as well as discounts, including tax and simple budget in there. So there's a lot more emphasis on that financial mathematics. Um, that is, is referenced at the start of the presentation, probably with regards to the purpose of these functional skills assessments. Um, that is something that's becoming apparent with the national numeracy, numeracy strategy, um, that these are areas where people do struggle calculating tax, calculating interest rates. Um, so that's been factored in when these qualifications have been redesigned. Some of the new areas are conversion graphs and conversion rates as well. Um, again, a very, very functional topic when we think a lot more people are going on holiday these days. Uh, understanding the conversion rate and being able to use that is incredibly important, uh, as well as conversion graphs too. Uh, conversion graphs questions typically made up of maybe having two different currencies on a graph uh, and looking to extract information from that graph. We've also got some other changes as well. So compound measures now, uh, it mentions speed, density, and rates of pay as well. So they are um, brand new, obviously, to this assessment, especially density in there and rates of pay too. Another new change would be no formula to be included for area and perimeter of circles and triangles. So at level two, learners will be expected to know that. Um, so it may be where formula is given for other shapes. However, triangles and circles, you can't have the formula given. Learners would have to know that. Uh, in addition to that, no formula for cylinder volume or surface area as well. Um, obviously, cylinder volume, if you are going to give um, the area of a circle, uh, if you're not going to give the formula for area of a circle, then you can't give, obviously, the formula for a cylinder volume either uh, and surface area too. Um, there's a specific reference now to creating a scale drawn. So this is something that previously we did have scale drawings within assessments, but now there's a specific reference for learners to create one themselves. And there's also use of coordinates within this large section. So that's something that may previously have not really came up in assessments before. And you can see that all fits within this middle section of area perimeter and volume of common shapes. Uh, the last few changes, uh, there's no change to the first one, understand and use common 2D representations of 3D objects. But plans and elevations is obviously on there. Uh, at level one, this was interpret plans and elevations. Now it's actually draw 3D shapes to include those plans and elevations. So learners will be expected to draw 3D shapes. Uh, and then in the last section, specific reference to angles and coordinates in 2D and 3D shapes as well. So again, that's an extension of that level one knowledge where they've been working with angles and coordinates to now actually including it within a shape or around a shape. Okay. We'll have a look, look through handling information and data. So some changes here. So probably the biggest change really uh, so far at level two is estimating the mean from a group frequency distribution from discrete data. So this is something that previously we wouldn't have done. Um, now learners will be expected to estimate the mean. So the reason why it's an estimate of the mean is because with a, uh, with a group frequency uh, data, you will have to take the midpoint of the group frequency table uh, and multiply that by the frequency in order to attain the FX column. So this is something that, that's quite new to our qualification uh, and quite a new topic area. So that's something that obviously would need to be worked on um, definitely for CPD. Uh, NCFE do plan on releasing a series of videos on these new topic areas describing exactly what, what they mean, um, what is it, um, how, how could it be asked, how could it be answered, what the steps would be. So that's certainly that's something that's new. Uh, if we do have any GCSE teachers, um, it's a very, very popular GCSE foundation topic um, that's seen. Um, and there's a lot of resources already out there on that topic. Um, in addition to that, there's also references for using mean, median, mode, and range to compare sets of data. There's now specific references to mode and median averages uh, from a set of quantities. Um, so that's something that was implicit, but is now actually referenced directly there. Um, I think the big change really is comparing two sets of data. So now that, that was something that really wasn't sort of assessed before, it's now very, very apparent that learners will need to use those averages and also that measure of spread to compare two sets of data. 
point twenty six um this has changed so there's now a specific reference to the probability of combined events and um, so the use of diagrams such as two way tables uh, is something that's new so learners will need to know how to extract values from two way tables uh, and use this to form probabilities um so that could be uh, again a, a fairly um a topic that has a lot of resources on it currently and is a very very functional topic as well so i think that's definitely another one similar to group frequency tables that's worth obviously researching and it's certainly something at the moment that you can look for resources for and you can easily see exactly what is going to happen with that again that might be one that we'll look to do a small short video on uh, and the final change which again is absolutely brand new is scatter diagrams so now scatter diagrams learners are expected to be able to draw scatter diagrams they're expected to be able to interpret those scatter diagrams and they're expected to know what correlation is on the scatter diagram so some big changes there for level two um, we'll have a little look at the problem solving uh, part as well so level two problem solving um, I referenced this before, but a complex problem is, is described here as one which requires a multi-step process um, and requires planning and working through at least two connected steps or processes. And um, some problems as well may draw from all the mathematical content areas, um, and that could be a connection between all of them. Similar to level one, I'll just open it up now for any questions with regards to the level two subject content. And give about 30 seconds for that. So. That's something, Sandy, I'll have a little look at as well. Thanks for pointing that out. Okay, there doesn't seem to be any more questions on there. So I'd advise at this stage, um, said before obviously at the start of the presentation um, you can't really at the moment as a tutor as a center do anything with regards to sample materials you can't do anything about the processes that will be involved because no AO is able at the moment to say for definite that that is how they are going to assess something and that is exactly how the process that's going to be involved as uh, something you can do something about is this subject content though so it should hopefully be all mapped out there it should hopefully be very very clear exactly what's expected of level two learners and level one learners as well uh, it's something that I'd be using at the moment so you'll have a number of staff meetings uh, planned in CPD sessions it would some be something especially would form the focus of those CPD and all, those staff meetings looking over that subject content uh, making sure all staff are familiar with the changes all staff feel confident with the changes uh, and all staff obviously feel confident with their own ability to teach to teach those topics if they don't then obviously there would need to be some sort of plan put in place to help upskill staff uh, NCFE will be doing a number of different workshops and delivery days and also future webinars as well. Uh, I'll talk about those at the end, but that's certainly the first step I'd be using this mapping document for. Uh, after that, it would be a case of looking at current resources. So having a look within your own center, uh, exactly how do you teach things at the moment? Um, what assessment criteria are you cu currently hitting? Can there be some changes made to your resources so that it's applicable for the new version of functional skills? Uh, I referenced at the start that there's a tremendous amount of work gone into the reform qualifications. Um, and really, where possible, you should be looking to use existing material and trying to adapt it for the new qualification there there are obviously some areas such as scatter diagrams group frequency tables where you may not have any resources whatsoever uh, and that's something that at the moment you can be looking to try and put procedures in place for you can be looking to try and find resources for those areas uh, that could be a task obviously to be done between a few tutors between a few teachers um, and also looking to train your staff as well the final thing that i'd use the map and documents for is really for informing your scheme of work so something that's just been released um, i think it was yesterday was that ann milton um, has 
released a letter uh, where she's recommended that the guided learning hours for functional skills does change. Uh, at the moment, this isn't something that's definitely going to go through and that's definitely going to change this number of hours, but she has recommended that the number of hours, uh, guided learning hours for functional skills is adapted to be 55 hours. So that was somewhere in the guest mark that we had previously where we thought was going to be around about 60, but she has recommended that does change to 55 hours. So with that knowledge of rough timings, as well as the knowledge of what subject content needs to be covered, uh, you can actually start putting together a scheme of work in place. Uh, that doesn't need to be need, uh, need to be fully resourced. Instead, it could just be looking what would be the logical way of teaching topics. Obviously, you wouldn't teach uh, group frequency tables before you'd done things like addition, multiplication, before you'd actually just done the mean uh, for just a, group, a, a set of data. So looking at the logical order of teaching. That's something that's high on our agenda as well, and that's something that we're going to be putting in place uh, and something that we'll certainly be working towards during our next series of functional skills reform webinars. Um, what we've tried to do to try and help you get thinking about what areas you can actually look at at the moment, we have put together a preparation document. So the preparation document is just some key decisions and changes that you would need to consider. So these are a few things that you could look to do. So reference before, obviously, about resources being fit for purpose. Um, also reviewing internal quality processes. Certainly for maths, there's tons and tons of changes. Uh, having a look at how you're going to have two sets of classes for functional skills when, obviously, the current version of functional skills will have up to 12 months to run. Um, before all learners are moved on to the reform qualification. So it may be a case that you do have a current functional skills class and a reform functional skills class. So what provisions do you have in place to account for that? Uh, what provisions do you have in place for teachers to account for that? Uh, it's not going to be practical for a teacher really to be dual delivering both those classes at the same time. Um, does your timetable accommodate the new requirements? So do you have plans in place for that GLH or that increase in GLH? Um, do you have a plan for moving learners on to the new qualifications? So as referenced before, there's that transitional period of up to 12 months. Uh, that will significantly affect those apprenticeship learners who are starting in July. Uh, plans will need, need to take place whether you plan on um, basically having the apprenticeship learners try and achieve on the current version of functional skills and try and sit level one and also sit level two within that 12 month transitional period or is it a case of actually teaching the new subject content and not registering those learners until September on the new functional skills or is the case you do a little bit of both you maybe try and get the apprenticeship learners to achieve on the current version of functional skills and then they sit their level two paper on the reform functional skills so lots of decisions there with regards to transitional periods I think I referenced this one before, staff up to date with the new requirements. I think that's the most important one, um, especially during uh, my role where we get out and we visit centres, we talk to centres a lot. Um, a lot of people are aware of the new changes. There's also a lot of people not aware of the functional skills reform. And I think it's important that people are aware of these changes because they are significant and they are some significant adjustments, especially that non-calculator section added and the number of uh, new subject content statements. Last sort of two, are all departments prepared? So this isn't just your own department. You may have functional skills embedded in other subject areas. So it might be you embed scale drawings into a employability section where you're looking at, I don't know, um, the layout of the building, uh, fire escapes, uh, that sort of thing. So has that been thought about? Has your exams officer been thinking about the functional skills reform? Are they aware that there's going to be two sets of registrations, two sets of entries on the new assessments, uh, as well as obviously things like delivery, so things like room bookings? Um, there's a lot, lot to consider there. Uh, I think the last one, obviously, we referenced that a few moments ago with regards to Anne Milton's statement. Uh, I have posted that on LinkedIn, so if you do uh, if you have connected on LinkedIn, um, obviously it's on there for you to read through. Um, if you haven't, then I would advise you do so uh, and we'll come to the functional skills group at the end. Um, the preparation documents in can be found on Qualhub, so in the same page that I showed you earlier.
that'll just be in this section here and it's broken down into three separate sections the preparation checklist is the same for maths and english so if you did watch the webinar yesterday i do apologize it is the same preparation document um, but it does serve that dual purpose um, some key things to highlight make sure you're aware of the four skills update they are updating their initial and diagnostic assessment processes for the functional skills reform and they have a number of exciting updates in there so i'd strongly recommend you have a look at those have you signed up for NCFE's webinar updates? I'd sign up for those via email so that you know when our next set of webinars are available. Uh, there's a number of things for different departments to consider in section two. Um, and then in section three, there's a number of things regarding resources, best practice uh, put in place there. Uh, the curriculum team's email is also referenced on here if you do have any questions. If you have any questions regarding any maths or English qualifications, including our standalone qualifications uh, that are commonly referred to as bite-sized qualifications, our product manager, uh, David Redden's emails on there as well. Right, so just going to open it for a poll um, and just see if people are feeling a little bit more confident about this functional skills reform. So I am going to open the final poll for this webinar. Uh, so how do you feel now about the functional skills reform? Do you feel very positive? Do you feel positive, undecided, worried or very worried? So I've launched that poll. So if you can get your results in. Okay, this just had about 80% of the votes in. So I am going to close that poll and share those results. So um, there's a lot of people obviously feeling very, very positive about this. And there's certainly more people feeling positive than before. And um, there are a few people still feeling worried about it. Uh, I imagine that's with reference to those new subject content statements. Now, those are something that's obviously been uh, decided upon by the DFE and also Ofqual. Um, I would say there are a lot of new subject content statements uh, and that does require an upskill of staff. But at the same time, I think from a tutor's perspective, uh, certainly from my previous background of being a practitioner, uh, I'd view those changes as positive because you know now actually what will be assessed and it's wrote down in stone exactly how that can be assessed. And um, so there's no surprises there, especially when you look across all award and organizations, uh, that comparability is definitely going to be there between them. So I'm glad we have had a positive effect with that poll uh, and also with sharing those mapping documents. Um, I guess the next thing really to look through is what NCFA are going to be doing in the next few months uh, and things that maybe you need to write down, jot in your diaries. So obviously in January, uh, we've got some delivery day events uh, around the country, Leeds, London, Manchester, London and Exeter. And um, they're starting in January and they're available on the website now. Um, we're going to be looking a lot of the day at the functional skills reform. It'll be a chance for obviously you to meet us face to face as well. If you have got any questions, uh, if you've got any queries at all, uh, it's a chance really to come along to that. Uh, we'll be looking at the subject content statements in depth there. Um, really doing a lot of myth busting when it comes to regards to them. And um, so they'll be quite exciting. In March, we've got some subject specific workshops as well. These are going to be free workshops, so they're not going to be chargeable events. Uh, we're looking to run those across the country. Uh, generally looking at not a full day's training, more sort of small half day trainings, but focused on specific areas. So things like the non-calculator section, things like level two, new subject content, uh, things like phonics for English at entry level. Uh, they're going to be coming out at around about March time. In May, we've got a huge national functional skills event planned uh, where we're going to showcase some of our materials and new materials for the upcoming reform. Um, and we'll have a number of workshops in that, uh, lots of guest speakers. In the summer, we've got new webinars as well, focusing on new aspects of teaching and learning. Um, I do believe that there'll be webinars sooner than the summer as well. Uh, the next series of webinars will really be focused on that scheme of work uh, that I referenced earlier and planning the most effective scheme of work, uh, as well as hopefully a, a few webinars based around the new sample content, uh, best practice of how to answer questions, exemplar answers, where common mistakes might be. And also in the summer, there'll be a series of delivery days uh, to nationally. Uh, again, I know for the delivery days, we've had a few requests saying, do you do any other areas for those? Uh, if you do want to submit a request for a different area other than the ones listed, uh, we've had some for Exeter. That was a, 
a good example of that. We had, I think, about 12 to 15 centres asking, could we have a, a delivery day in Exeter? And we have honoured that. Uh, we do need around about 10 delegates in order for the day to actually function. So we would need at least 10 responses in order to put that in our diaries but if you are interested and you've got other people you know within the local area who are interested in that then obviously fill in the uh, form on the curriculum support page and request that curriculum support uh, the most important one obviously at the end is the new functional skills starting in september 2019 and that legacy or current functional skills registration ending the final thing then, then this isn't quite a poll, this is more uh, an open question. You can get back to us via answering the question in the question toolbox or via email, uh, or if you've got LinkedIn, obviously send, send me a message on there. Uh, really, we're very, very interested in CFA of what support you need uh, to be able to guide you through the upcoming changes. So what things would you like to see? Some of the things that we have identified is training on the non-calculator section, um, training on things like standardization. So by that, I don't just mean in reference to entry level qualifications. I also mean on how best to answer level one, level two uh, papers, how our mark schemes are going to work um, and all of that sort of wraparound for that. Uh, exam technique really. Um, we've also identified curriculum planning support, so by that I mean sort of schemes of work, how you plan on delivering this, what resources you can use. Um, also those workshops I referenced earlier on delivering English and maths, but there are if there are any other areas where you think actually this subject content statement, I'm really worried about that, could you provide some training, could you provide some support on that, we'd be really really interested to hear that. Um, so if you could please get back to us regarding that. Okay, so it really brings us to the end of our webinar. Uh, we've pretty much kept to the timings. I think we've got a few minutes now just to look through any final questions anyone may have. So I'm just going to open the question toolbox. Okay, so there's a question that says, are you aware of any initial assessment packages that are adapting to reflect the reform changes, e.g. four skills, BKSB? Uh, yeah, so I think I referenced that one before. Uh, four skills is a partner company of NCFE, uh, and obviously you receive a free with functional skills registrations. Uh, they're doing a lot of work to adapt their initial and diagnostic assessments and um, to reflect those changes. They're also looking to... Um, adapt the resources as well within the individual skills plan so that they're updated for this new functional skills reform. I think within this webinar, we've touched upon the map and document. Uh, there isn't a lot of content change in levels for level one, level two. It's just generally more descriptive. At entry levels, though, there are a lot of subject content changes, things going from entry level three to entry level two uh, and so on. So a lot of those resources will be adapted and changed for the functional skills reform. With regards to BKS, it's not a provider that we work with at the moment, so I, I wouldn't be specifically aware of uh, anything they're doing. I imagine most uh, initial and diagnostic assessment packages will have to make changes though for the reform because it is a different qualification. Um, that's brilliant. I've had some requests for you from trainers uh, as well. That's great. Uh, there's a question regarding how to access four skills resources. Uh, four skills resources are almost sort of hidden in the background of four skills. I'll just bring up four skills quickly just to answer that query. Um, if I just log into this. So if you are interested in accessing four skills resources, uh, you can access them in the map section and view resources. Level one and level two are listed here. There's a number of interactive resources here, uh, as well as paper based resources towards the end too. Uh, I would strongly recommend you log in and have a look through those resources. Uh, NCFE also have a number of resources as well. And I think I've mentioned these previously. Uh, you can find them on our Qual Hub website. Um, so they're in there. I'll just have a look if there's any previous questions. I think I've answered the one from Debbie with regards to will the initial assessments be changing to reflect the changes? Uh, that's a definite yes. And the last one from Rebecca, what login do we need to use to access four skills? Uh, if you're registering learners with NCFE, four skills does come free. Um, there's 
a request form on the Qual Hub page. So I'll just quickly go into that. Functional skills, and there should be a four skills section where you can request uh, get access for it. And it's uh, you'll need to input your centre name, centre name, and contact name. Um, so that's the request form again is, and you can see the following link: delivery and learner support, functional skills, four skills. Um, I have had a question with regards to where the mapping documents are found. So you will be able to access them via email after this presentation. If you do want to access them immediately though, they're currently found in the news and update sections. So again, that's delivery and learner support, functional skills, functional skills, news and updates, uh, and the, all the mapping documents will be within that section. Okay, I think that's all of the questions for this webinar. Uh, if anything does pop up and you are thinking, actually, I wish I had a vast at the time, um, I have left my contact details as well as my colleague, uh, David Redden's contact details on the last slide. Um, so feel free to email us with any questions or queries you may have. Um, in addition to that, we also have a LinkedIn group. Uh, if you are on LinkedIn, I'd strongly recommend you join that group. Uh, there's a series of updates that go on there. Uh, we keep that very, very up to date. I think within hours of Anne Milton's JLH um, update, uh, my colleague David Redden had actually posted an update on that group. So if you do wish to receive functional skills news uh, fast, then obviously that would be a group to join. Um, also feel free to connect with either of us on LinkedIn. Um, that's absolutely fine as well. We regularly post functional skills and wider, um, obviously maths and English post regularly uh, and that can be quite interesting okay i'm going to end the webinar now so i'd just like to thank everyone for their attendance today uh, i do hope you found the webinar useful uh, and we would appreciate any feedback that you do have uh, if you do have any feedback for improving future webinars thank you everyone